our world has changed. The Internet of Things has arrived. By some estimates, people believe that 50 billion devices will be connected in this mesh that we've created as society. That's 279 million self-driving cars. It's a petabyte a day of storage that manufacturing firms are going to create. How many healthcare devices? It continues to grow. It's also international in scope. It has no confines of where we live as people. It connects things in ways where we cannot even understand how it is doing some of the things we're doing. How does Alexa, Siri, Google Home know to do the things that we ask it to do simply by using our voice? Across the US and definitely on this side of the country, we're on, we're always on. How do we work with that as we continue to want more and ask for more? Today's assignment, we get to take a look at that. We get to press Control, Alt, Delete. I did this at a very early age. And now, you know, at 38 years old, I'm amazed at the reality that I can now create. In the evolution of computing, if you look at the last 30 years, it starts with a device, a computer. And throughout the 90s, we used a lot of different stuff. We had Windows NT. We had Windows 2000. We virtualized. We took physical equipment and turned it into software that we access. We then had XP and 7, and we virtualized that. And now today, we get to figure out what do we want to do. None of that was possible, though, without success. Success comes from having a vision, executing on that, and getting people to adopt it. Notice Windows Millennium, not there. A lot of blue screens. When we think about what we want to be, businesses are focusing on what is core to their business. They want to invest in that and give people what they need so they can be more productive. That means applications anywhere, on any device, when we want them, wherever we want them. No longer confined. That's big. It's known as digital transformation. This is a difficult thing that we're going to go through, and I think it's important to look back of, we've done this before. In the Industrial Revolution, we decided to employ machines. And we first went after processes that we did, and we used mechanics to loom, create things. Then we said, we're creating things. We need to go faster. We built an assembly line. And then in 1969, the programmable controller came about, and a lot of different ideas started coming up. We moved into creating machines that did things in ways we could never imagine. And now today, with IoT and cloud technologies, and the amount of devices we're adding to this world, it's going to get a lot more complex. Let's look at what happens, though, when we use those machines and the advancements that happen. People change the way they worked. It used to take about, in the 1850s, 80 hours to produce 100 bushels of corn. So two and a half acres, and we can feed people. That's how the economy was operating. 40 years later, we added more horses more machines, more things. And we reduced the time by 50%. And that was le left us with a great thing. Time. That's my father when he was a kid, sitting on his plowed farm in Webster. He was able to think, what do I want to do? You didn't get to do that back in the day. You went to work, like my grandfather. <laughs> the challenge was we had to go to work in new places. Not since the Neolithic Revolution had people had to travel outside of the home to go work, sell goods, interact with people. And that creates conflict because it's change. Sometimes those changes result in difficult circumstances. Skills changed. 
the speed at which we needed to learn something changed. Maybe what we had wasn't what somebody was looking for. So what happened? Some people turned and faced the strange, and some people didn't. One guy who turned and faced the strange, happened about 175 years ago, lived in 58 miles from here, Buffalo, New York. Joseph Dark created the grain elevator. This changed the way in which we were able to move the amount of materials and goods we were creating at a fast pace up and down the Erie Canal. Those buildings still stand today, but we don't really use those anymore. We advanced. I believe that the next digital economy is going to be one where robots and AI change the way in which we operate. And that's going to make us go through some pretty interesting conversations with ourselves, with our friends at home, and our family members, and our coworkers. And we're all going to go through this where we say, robots can't do what I can do. Only I can do what I can do. Then we'll get to a point where we realize, well, sure, a robot can do that, but I've got to train it a few times. And then we're going to think about things that we actually cannot do because we've automated to a scale that we can't keep up with. 50 billion devices is a lot of things. And we keep asking for more. Today's robots are big, heavy, walled off from people because they don't know you're there. The next generation is going to start seeing these things. And then there's going to be those that live in the void that we never see. But they may be there helping us every time we ask for something to be done. The one thing that robots can't do, at least for a very long while though, is ask what do people want to do? Which leaves us the ability to ask the question, what are people for? I believe people are creative. Machines, you can measure in productivity. How fast, how nimble, how adaptable to change. But they can't make a gut call. They can't decide, I want to do this. So I said that our assignment today was to press Control-Alt-Delete. I remember back when I first started disrupting technology in 2006. We, had, we were two years away from when desktop virtualization, taking a physical computer and turning it into software and putting it in the cloud, existed. And I walked into work and I didn't know I was going to experience this, but I saw it happen. And I stayed at work for two extra hours. Got yelled at when I got home. But I walked in and said, we are going to change. I will never touch a physical machine again as part of the job that I do today. I then echoed that message to a very close coworker of mine who's still a colleague today and told him, this very thing. We are going to go create robots. And when we said that, he looked at me in bewilderment and didn't know what I meant. Now, I was talking about taking a machine and turning it into software. Fast forward to about two years ago, I said to him, guess what? we get to build robots, and they're coming. And he then returned this gift to me and said, I created this for you because we already talked about this, and you told me to remain calm. Our world is going to change. This hangs in my office. I look at it every morning. We get to do this. We don't have to do it. We are going to look back on this time as an amazing moment in our world's history, where we all chose to connect one another on a global scale. It's not a chore. So keep calm, and remember, everything is possible in the land of make-believe.